People are thankful when they are rescued from dire circumstances. Whom do we thank in these circumstances? Jonah acknowledges with thanksgiving that God's love protects and offers deliverance. Today's key verse reads, But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Jonah chapter 2 verse 9. In the belly of the fish, Jonah discovers repentance for his actions. This seed of repentance is expressed in a prayer for deliverance from his predicament. This prayer is both a request for deliverance and a hymn of praise. Jonah is committed to obeying God and desperately wants to be released from this situation. Jonah faces death inside the belly of a fish and has no other option but to cry out to God. He does not pray from the temple or from the comfort of his own home. He prays to God in an impossible and very uncomfortable position. Christ's reference to Jonah here does not indicate that Jonah died or was dead for three days, but that he was in the fish's belly for three days. In the Bible, three days represents a relatively short, divinely ordained period of time in which something significant and transformative happened. In verses 5 through 6, Jonah describes his predicament. The waters surrounded him even to his soul. The word for soul, in its most basic meaning, refers to the throat, where one's very breath fills the lungs and where one accurate cut can kill, as well as to life itself. In other words, the waters were up to his throat and threatening his very life. Jonah was at the brink of death and needed a reversal of fortune. In verse 7, we see a turning point where he knows his prayer has been heard and can hope for salvation and deliverance. Before he hoped to be in the temple praying, but now Jonah declares that his prayer reached the temple where God's presence resided. Although he was far from God and cast out of his sight, his prayer reached his ears. Although he is trapped in the fish's belly, he believes his prayer has reached God's holy temple. His hope for deliverance is also contrasted with those who worship idols. They forsake their own hope of salvation from God. Being assured that his prayer was heard probably reinforces for Jonah what he recently learned from the storm at sea. He tried to run away from God, fleeing toward Tarshish. When God sent the storm, however, Jonah knew he could not outrun him. Now in the depths of the sea, Jonah again thought he was beyond God's power, but again finds that he was wrong. God's power stretches across the farthest sea and to the bottom of the deepest ocean. His voice of thanksgiving will be his sacrifice to the Lord. He has made a vow to God and will fulfill that vow. After three days and three nights, the Lord speaks to the fish, again, <laughs> and commands it to vomit Jonah onto shore, and it obeys. Once Jonah realizes where his help must come from, he receives it. Jonah does not specifically ask God to save him from the belly of the fish. Instead, he comes to realize that God is the only one who can save him, and that is all the acknowledgement God wants before setting his prophet free to fulfill his will again. It should not be missed that the word for dry land is the same word Jonah utters in chapter 1 verse 9 when he tells the sailors he worships the Lord who made the sea and the dry land. Jonah has now experienced both extremes with God and it is his prayer of confession and salvation that prompts God to remove him from the depths of the sea to the dry land. Here's our lesson. As long as we have breath in our lungs, we have the opportunity to pray to God and seek him out. There are no impossible cases with God. Thank you for watching Highlights. Heavenly Father, fill our hearts with what we truly desire, for who we truly seek is you.